of the NHL draft is done. I thought that this would be the perfect time to have a look and discuss some of the things that we saw come out of the NHL draft day one, specifically for the Pacific Division teams uh, in the NHL. As I'm sure most of you know, I live in the UK, so I stayed up... I think until Vancouver's pick, which was the 15th pick last night. And then I was like, I got to go to sleep. It was past 2 a.m. at that point and I was dead. So um, I had to catch up on some of it today, but uh, it's been really exciting so far, I think. And there's a lot to discuss for the picks that we saw for the Pacific Division teams in the first round. So the first Pacific Division team that we saw make any kind of pick was the Seattle Kraken at fourth. And the Seattle Kraken got exceptionally lucky, I think it's fair to say because they drafted Shane Wright. Now, Shane Wright was the draft prospect that most people thought the Montreal Canadiens at first pick were going to select for themselves. And actually, turns out they didn't do that. They de they went with Slavskovsky. Oh my goodness. Slavskovsky uh, instead, which shocked a lot of people. And that meant that this guy who was ostensibly the favorite was now left completely open. Now, the interesting thing about the Seattle Kraken is they are one one of those teams who arguably did not necessarily need to look for a specific role. It's not like they needed a center. It's not like they needed to look for... I don't know, other specific roles because they've only been around for one year. They be they came last in the Pacific Division in the regular season of the NHL and they really just kind of need to develop what they have there. Um, so to be able to pick up Shane Wright, who is this star center and is this absolute insane player, was really, really big for the Seattle Kraken. Uh, so he's six foot, he's 199 pounds, um, which really annoys me. I hope he puts on an extra pound just to neaten that up. <laughs> um, he plays center, he shoots right, um, and he's a Canadian player who currently plays for the Kingston uh, Frontenacs. He's their captain, um, and he has had some really, really impressive statistics uh, in the 2021 to 2022 season he has gone 32 62 94 in 63 games I'm not talking about 100 games. I'm talking about 63 games. This guy went 94 points. And then in the playoffs, he went 3, 11, 14. Uh, he also um, was the captain in the Canada under 18s in the 2021 World Juniors as well. So he has had a really, really exceptional season just gone. And for him to end up on Seattle is probably something that they are feeling super fortunate about. Um, currently, their star player, quote unquote, quote is Jared McCann. Uh, it, he, he plays kind of center and left wing. So it could be that these two do end up becoming line mates. And that's what the Kraken decide to develop as that first line. Uh, because McCann, as much as he is there, as I say, quote unquote, star player, um, he finished the season at 50 points, um, which, you know, I always kind of say that to be a top team, you want to be looking at your star player getting to that 100 point season, right? So let's just assume they're kind of like halfway there. So to really develop that line and have such an, a crazy good player um, go into a line potentially with Jared McCann, I think would be massive. The next draft that we saw come in was uh, the 10th um, pick which went to the Anaheim Ducks and they picked Pavel Minchikov. Um, now this is a player that I've spoken about a little bit in the uh, video that I did discussing potential picks for the LA Kings. Now as we later found out the LA Kings decided to forego their first round pick um, so that they could pick up Kevin Fiala um, and instead the Anaheim Ducks have picked him up Anyway, and, you know, they were ahead of the LA Kings pick at 19th, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Minchikov was the, uh, the second left-handed defenseman to be picked up in uh, this draft. Um, Kevin Kaczynski came before him. Um, kind of unsurprisingly, I think Kaczynski um, was usually put um, just above him in terms of left-handed defensemen, so... Not really too surprised there. Um, and when you also have a look at some of these players that are on the Anaheim Ducks, we have their star defenseman, Shattenkirk. He shoots right. Um, Jamie Drisdell shoots right as well. So there is space to be bringing in a left-handed demon into this team. Now, there are some uh, left-handed demon who are playing for the San Diego Goals and are currently being developed. But I think it's really important to also consider the fact that Lindholm was recently traded to the Boston Bruins. Um, and he 
he was one of those left-handed defensemen. So to have the opportunity to develop some depth in that role, I think is really big for the Anaheim Ducks. And it seems that a lot of the experts were also uh, looking at defensemen being picked up. Um, there were a couple of people who thought that maybe, you know, a, a strong center might be the uh, priority, just given that Getzlaff has just retired. Um, but we will we'll get to that. Uh, just for a little bit of information on Minchikov, he's six foot two, 194 pounds. He's from Moscow, Russia. Um, and he currently plays for the Saginaw Spirit in the OHL. So he's been playing in Canada for the last couple of seasons. Uh, and in the 2021 to 22 season, he went 17, 45, 62 in 67 games, which is very impressive especially for a demon. Next, we're going to go to 15th pick, which was the Vancouver Canucks, and they picked Jonathan Lakerimaki. My first thought when Vancouver selected Lakerimaki was what a shock that we are seeing Vancouver pick a Swede. <laughs> Like, they have a Swedish GM, they have become known as the home for Swedes, pretty much, in the NHL. And what do you know? They're picking up another one. <gasps> and honestly, I kind of hope that that helps Lakaramaki feel at home on this roster and as part of this team. Um, he actually said in an interview that, um, you know, he was a really big fan of, like, Elias Pedersen, for example. And just knowing that there is that, um, I would imagine that if you're moving across the world, uh, to go and be part of an organization, it, it's probably nice to know that there are people who feel like home there. Now, he is a right winger, and I think that Vancouver are probably one of these teams that, kind of similarly to what I said about the Seattle Kraken just a little bit before, is uh, that they weren't necessarily desperate for any one particular role. Um, however, the thing with right wingers, um, the two highest profile of which on Vancouver are Connor Garland and Brock Besser, um, I think that it is a role that's probably good to add some depth to for the team. I think for a number of people, the biggest surprise about Vancouver's um, draft situation in the first round is that many people were actually predicting to see a JT Miller trade uh, go away in, uh, in this round. And it was interesting because I think the sort of rumor was that he was going to potentially go over to the NJ Devils. Now, the NJ Devils had their second pick in this round and we saw them select. We didn't see them get involved in a trade there. So straight up, that sort of kind of gave this idea that maybe that wasn't going to happen. And uh, so far, we haven't seen a trade uh, be involved with JT Miller. Um, I suppose there's always time for it. I personally don't know if I expect to be JT, uh, expect to see JT Miller be included in a trade for a second round or below. So I suppose that's kind of got an asterisk next to it and is on hold. Uh, but as it stands, of course, as we now know, this um, prediction hypothesis just didn't come to light. Now, a little bit more information about Lakeri Mackey. He's 17, he's 5'11", he's 172 pounds. So he's not uh, a, a big guy, really. Um, he's, as we know, from Sweden. He's played for... Um, Jörg Gordon's IF in the SHL. So he's playing as part of the Swedish Hockey League. And in 2021 to 2022, he went 7-2-9 in 26 games. But the sort of side note to that is the fact that he actually missed part of the season due to suffering from mononucleosis, which is obviously a brutal um illness to be having and that might also mean that he he still needs some development um just off the back of that recovery whether that's to um get bigger or or whatever it is like he's had some time out he's gonna have to bounce back from that um but at the world juniors he went 11 10 21 in 12 games which is truly very impressive uh, and that also put him at the top of all skaters in the world juniors um and is part of the reason why sweden won so if you just take away the fact that he had this illness and has clearly you know had some disadvantage working against him um you can kind of see the truth in his stats when you look at the wjc instead I saw a point be made online that, um, you know, even though he does need this time to sort of bounce back from having the illness and whatever, because Vancouver aren't a team that are desperate to like fill a specific role, it means that they don't need to rush his development. And I think that's a really nice way of looking at it. Um, and uh, hopefully for him is... Uh, you know, it doesn't put a lot of pressure on him that it may otherwise have done. So next we'll be going to the 22nd pick, which was once again, um, the Anaheim Ducks. And for this pick, they went with Nathan Gaucher. Nathan Gaucher is an 18 year old, six foot three, 207 pounds. So he is a big guy and he is a center who shoots right. 
Who does that sound like? Oh yeah, Ryan gets love. <laughs> Can't speak. Oh yeah, Ryan gets love. He was a right-handed center. So I guess they're just filling the gap that they've just, <laughs> you know, uh, gained. He's the alternate captain for the Quebec Remparts. I assume actually that's meant to be said in a French accent. So what, like the Quebec Remparts? I assume. Uh, in 2021 to 2022, he went 31, uh, 26, 57 in 66 games. So very close to point per game. Um, and then in the playoffs, he went 3, 6, 9. And that was in 12 playoff games. So once again, that's also quite close to a point per game. The really interesting thing about uh, Gaucher, I think, is that he's not um, really recorded as being a very flashy player. He, uh, according to a number of sources, is just a very safe, reliable player. He's a solid player. Um, he's a good two-way forward like he has a lot of fundamentals and he's a guy who can get the job done really well but he's not necessarily going to be the guy who's like doing all of these crazy flashy um, highlight reel worthy plays um, so that's kind of interesting because you know I joke sort of about the fact that he's kind of replacing that role that gets laugh as left um but that really was the player that gets laugh was so it's sort of like this development um that anaheim want to be bringing in is for something different the really nice thing though is the fact that currently the duck star prospect is uh mason mctavish um and the idea that both of these two players could sort of be developed for that same slash similar role um at the same time and then sort of make their way presumably into the nhl team um at a similar moment too it just suggests that there is going to be some uh you know just something really worth looking forward to in the coming years from the anaheim ducks and that hopefully both of these players work in conjunction with one another um, is going to provide a, a really strong, um, you know, some really strong forward lines um, for the team. It was really nice as well because in an interview, Gaucher was talking about how um, Anaheim had actually worked really hard to sort of reach out to him and develop a relationship with him and they were really interested in getting to know him. So that's just a really nice thing to hear that from the organization side, like they're already invested in him. They already knew that they wanted to bring him in. Um, and hopefully that means that the sort of um, commitment to his development is going to be something that turns out really well for the team. Let's go to the 27th overall pick, which was the San Jose Sharks, and they took Philip Beistet. Now, the San Jose Sharks originally had the 11th pick, but they traded back. And this was something that analysts actually predicted may happen before the draft even came around. The reason being that the San Jose Sharks may just be looking for more picks rather than necessarily prioritizing having a very early pick. I think the thing with the San Jose Sharks is there's this kind of idea right now that they're sort of playing the long con um, in the sense that they have a lot of promising prospects right now and they just want to bring in somebody or some more players who can kind of complement what it is they're building um, and, and don't necessarily need to rush into having someone who is going to be like NHL ready straight away and going to be a star player right now. Like they are working on this process of development. Uh, some information about Philip Beistert. He's 18, he's six foot four he's 105 pounds um which so he's he's quite a big boy uh plays center he shoots left um and he's from linshipping in sweden and he currently plays for linshipping hc in the shl and in the 2021 to 22 season he went 112 in 15 games um so he hasn't really played very much for them so far but if you actually look at his time on the under 20s team uh he went 16 33 49 in 40 games so he is superseding this idea of point per game so again it's just another one of those players who you kind of have to look at um other instances of of their time on teams to to really get a full view of what it is they they're like and what it is they can do now i mentioned that he's quite a big boy uh there is only one one player on the san jose sharks uh, or forward on the san jose sharks who is bigger than him and that is jasper weatherby who is six foot four and 222 pounds other than that everybody else is smaller so he's really kind of like coming into this sort of space that um isn't really being taken by anybody else on san jose uh so even though i mentioned that they don't necessarily need like some star player who's going to jump in and be nhl ready right now um it is nice to know that they've sort of looked at filling this uh, this gap that they currently have on their roster and they want to be sure they have um you know that sort of like big heavy uh, like 
intimidating, I guess, forward. And then to finally round out uh, what we saw last night, at 32nd, we have the Edmonton Oilers and they picked Reed Schaefer. Now, the Edmonton Oilers did something that I think a lot of people expected them to do, and that was trade away Zach Cassian. But they also threw in their number 29th uh, pick and a 2024 third round pick too, Uh, to the Arizona Coyotes in exchange for this 32nd um, pick in the first round. Um, Now, a lot of the reason why people expected Zach Cassian to go, or at least he was one of a few players that was being discussed as potentially going, uh, is just because Edmonton is so desperate to free up cap space. Um, Their sort of top players are so very extraordinarily expensive um, that they can't necessarily afford... um, players who are not actually providing um you know the value that their uh salaries would imply that they will give and i think that's the problem with a number of these sort of middle-ish players on the teams like cassian being one of them so about reed schaefer he's 18 he's six foot three he's 214 pounds so again he's also a big guy um he's a left winger which is the same as fogel or evander kane for example um and i think one of the really important things about him right now is that he could help provide depth because again this is what i bring up is um Um, The Edmonton Oilers are very front heavy. They have these exceptional players like at the very top. And then it's sort of like, what happens after that? Like if your first line is not playing, where are your potential, um, you know, fullbacks and your your short fallings, right? And I think that's uh, something that they're thinking about right now. So trying to build some depth there um, is something that could, uh, you know, end up being... uh, in the in the longer run uh, quite useful for Edmonton. Um, Schaefer currently plays for the Seattle Thunderbirds and in the 2021 to 22 season he went 32 26 58 in 66 games so he is also another one of these you know players who nearly had a, a point per game season and then 6 15 21 in 25 playoff games which again is quite impressive um, and he was actually the second highest rookie uh, in terms of playoff points um, in the Western Hockey League um playoffs so um you know he's actually a pretty solid pick in my opinion for when you're in that sort of mid-range where you get to like that 30 second um pick and you've had these star players taken away i think that if you're looking for someone to provide depth on your team uh reed schaefer does look like a good option so that was all we saw in terms of pacific division uh draft picks um because obviously a number of the teams have traded away um you know their drafts they won't be coming in until later rounds so that is what we got to see last night um and i think that it's been really exciting because there were some unexpected uh things and there were some Um, more expected things you know for example Shane Wright going to the Seattle Kraken unexpected Pavel Minchikov going to the Anaheim Ducks perhaps a little bit more expected Um, and I'm very excited and interested to see what's going to happen once we get into the second round tonight Uh, but so far it's just been really fascinating to see where the priorities are coming for these teams um, and seeing potentially how the future of the Pacific Division is going to look because as you guys know I love me some Pacific Division hockey (laughs) let me know in the comments what your thoughts are from the first round of the NHL draft and what you're maybe expecting slash hoping for in the upcoming rounds, um, especially before we get into it tonight. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's a little bit more of a discussion type. I suppose it feels more like a podcast, except I don't have anyone to talk to. So what's your opinion, invisible person? (laughs) I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.